former NBA first round draft pick Jonathan Bender is here to talk about his old team, the Pacers, and his new endeavors. It's time for SI Now, powered by Ford. Hi, everyone. Welcome to SI Now, powered by Ford. It's Wednesday, April 23rd, and I'm Maggie Gray. My next guest played eight years in the NBA, seven of them with the Indiana Pacers. He's now the founder and inventor of JBIT Med Pro. Jonathan Bender is here. We have to start with your former team. All right. In a playoff battle right now with the Atlanta Hawks news today, Lance Stevenson and Evan Turner had to be separated before the playoffs started. Clearly something is happening in Indiana that's not good. What do you see from a bird's eye view? Uh, you know, it happens. You know, every team, you're not everybody's going to get along 100% of the time. So every now and again, you'll have those little ruffles that, that, that come in here and there. I think that they'll get their chemistry back. I think this is just a minor setback for them, and they're going to be okay. I've, I've seen it before. Can you get the chemistry back when you're now in a pressure-packed situation like the playoffs? Um, I think I think they've been through this point before. Last year, you know, uh, doing what they did last year, I think they got a little experience, especially Paul George and some of the other guys. So now this year, going back into the playoffs, which is – Indeed, pressure, but having this extra baggage as far as guys, you know, having their misunderstandings and stuff, I think that they should get their bearings back fairly quickly. It shouldn't be a problem. You were drafted right out of high school. Uh -huh. Looking back on that decision, did you make the right choice? Yes, I, I think I did. I, I have no regrets about it. How did you know that? Uh, I knew that because I had a contract. <laughs> <laughs> And I knew that because, you know, coming from a small town, which I came from, and having a big opportunity like that, you definitely don't turn it down. You know, I was the first one to come from that area and definitely to be, have the opportunity to put my city on the map and go and represent, you know, Mississippi. Um, I felt like it was a great opportunity and I have no regrets. And you had a long career. Now I've gone on to more things, which we're going to get to in just a second. Uh -huh. The new NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, has said it's a priority for him to raise the NBA age limit to 20. Okay, <sighs> how do you feel about that? Um, it's just weird to me because, uh, like we said before, you know, you got soccer players that come out when they're 14, 13 years old. Tennis, 13, 14, 15 years old. Baseball guys still get drafted out of high school. I don't understand the reasoning behind it. Do they really want these guys to get a better education or to stay in college longer, or is it something else? I don't know. I, I don't think it's called for. You have gone on to invent this product. Mm -hmm. It's called MedPro. Uh -huh. It helps people, athletes mm -hmm. and regular people, mm -hmm. relieves pain on their joints. How did you come about inventing this? Was this because you needed it, because it, you were it, in pain? It was out of necessity. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I was uh, troubled by chronic knee injuries back in 2005 and 6, and I was looking for something that uh, could help take the pressure off of my knees and really engage my quad muscles, which I needed quad engagement to, to protect my joints, and developed it. Um, it was fairly easy. It looked like crap, absolute crap when I did it the first day, but after refining it, it became to be a, a pretty um, uh, good-looking product and worked very well. How did you teach yourself to be a businessman? Uh, books. <laughs> books and uh, audio books, a bunch of audio books. So I, I kind of turned down the hip-hop, started turning up more of the audio books and trying to get more knowledge about where I was trying to go, you know? For people who would say an athlete should go to college because mm -hmm. it sets them up for their career after their playing days are over. You're self-taught and you've done very well for yourself. How are you able to do that? I think it's knowing your end game. I mean, when I was headed to the NBA, I knew the NBA was the end game and I knew I had to prepare for it. But um, most people now go to college and don't, know really, don't really know their end game. Mm -hmm. So I think if you know the end game in the beginning and know where you want to be, where you truly want to be, then you would take the, the right steps, whether that's going to college or whether that's getting a great mentor or doing whatever you have to do to get there and get to that end result. We see so many athletes have trouble mm -hmm. controlling, holding on to their money. Mm -hmm. You have not only done that, but you have created a very successful business in your second career. Looking back, are there any mistakes that you made early on? Well, I didn't always do a good job of holding <laughs> on to my money. <laughs> you know, coming out of high school at age uh, 18 
and uh, I, I was in a, a, a space where I was taking care of my whole family. I had my whole family on a payroll like I was a big time employer or something, right? <laughs> and I was just a basketball player. Well, that came to the end after a couple of years and you, you live and you learn and you, you, know, you really figure out what you need to do at the end of the day. And if you're determined to figure that out and you know, have a better situation for yourself later on, you will. You played for both Larry Bird and Isaiah Thomas. Mm -hmm. Who was the better coach? Uh, why are you gonna put me on? You can't put me on a spot like that. You can't put me on a spot like that. They they both were phenomenal coaches. How were they different? Right. Um, they were different, I guess. Isaiah, he wanted more control, so it was more of you know he would create the vision of what he wanted the team to be like and what he wanted to do on the court with certain guys. Larry would give more uh, more leeway to his uh, assistant coaches to help him make decisions and what to do and uh, different plays and, and different things to do with the team as far as that. So Very interesting. That's the, di that's the difference. I Diplomatic would, answer yeah. from Jonathan yeah. Bender. <laughs> I think people, when they see you and how tall you are, they just mm -hmm. assume that you were a forward. But you uh -huh. were a guard. You were a scorer. Uh -huh. When you look back uh, on how you were able to do that, do you see shades of Kevin Durant? Um. Well, I don't compare myself to anybody else, but uh, I think we have similarities when it comes down to our uh, ball handling ability and uh, as far as the ability to shoot the ball and the ability to score and, uh, you know, our athleticism as well. So I definitely can see some flashbacks of myself when I watch him play nowadays. You were drafted with the intent that you would be the next Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. There are... <laughs> people who are going to be drafted soon who we're going to call the next Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. the next Dirk Nowitzki. Mm -hmm. How much pressure comes with that? Um, I think it, it's a, it, in the beginning it's not real pressure until it's time. Until like that guy you're supposed to replace is now really stepping mm -hmm. down and they're like, okay, you know, you know this is your team, right? But don't worry, just calm down, stay calm, but you know this is your team, right? You know, it's that sort of thing. So it's a little bit of pressure, but um, like I said before, as long as they have a, a, good, um, a, a good bit of uh, coaches and staff around that player and he has good support, he should be okay. Jonathan Bender, congratulations. Your second career, Med Thank Pro. You. Get it if you have joint pain. You say doctors are approving this thing. They a love it. A absolutely. Absolutely. This is the first, one of the first things I did. I went to one of the most respected doctors uh, that, that work with us pro athletes, and I let him try it and use it. And he said, uh, you know, you have something magnificent on your hands. Once he told me that, I wasn't worried about too many other people. Once he told me that, you know, it was pretty much a done deal. So Congratulations yeah. on a long playing career and also the success you found post-MBA. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for watching SI Now, powered by Ford. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern.